here I'm looking at uh, building complex scenes using models. Copyright will be covered elsewhere, but I'm just focusing on the technical side here. So I have models I've built elsewhere and I want to bring them into this scene. Now depending on what it is, what type it is and that sort of stuff depends on how you do it. So I'm just going to delete this cube to keep the center area nice and clear. And there are two ways to import or bring in Blender files. The first is link, the second is append. So link keeps, creates a link to the original file. So if I try and modify this, and I'll try and grab it and move it, but you see I can't, um, it has certain restrictions around it because basically what they're trying to do is somebody else can go modify this thing and build this vehicle. And then when you build into your scene, you don't care about the, the building of that mesh. You want to actually animate what's going on. So you don't want to worry about the details. So linking becomes quite useful because you can actually work in a bit of a team to build more complicated systems or pieces or bits or, or whatever. Uh, now, if you want to actually do stuff to this, there are a whole bunch of relationships. You can make it a proxy. You can make it a local object if it's local. You can then grab it and move it. The second one that I'm looking at is appending files. This basically takes, in this case, the object um, and adds it to the scene. And here you can see I've just done that. Now, if I select this and I'll go over to the modifier stack because I know it's got modifiers, um, the full details are here. Now, if I go to here, I know this is modified because or originally modified, but I can't edit it. Can't get to the edit mode on this object. But if I select this one, I can drop into edit mode. I can start modifying bits and pieces. So append basically sets up to bring additional stuff in. So if you need to customize it for a, a current animation and that sort of stuff. But this only covers Blender data types. If we take another step further and we look at import, we can actually bring stuff in from different um, 3D animation software. The two exceptions on this list are the Images Planes, which is an add-on that I have been using to bring in background images, and I'll get to that in a moment, and Scalable Vector Graphics, which is a flat 2D image. All the rest should bring in 3D models. Um, the STLs is something I'm using for 3D printing. It's not one of the default setups. The import, the export is the flick of the import, and you can export stuff you create. ST, as I said, STL is great for 3D printing. Uh, now, under the edit menu, the final thing we want to look at is some preferences. So we have add-ons here. And this allows us to bring in um, additional stuff. So I just want to look at the mesh add-ons. And it shortens this list. And on this list, we have some really funky things. We have mesh tools and no add mesh, not mesh tools. So add mesh. We have ant landscapes, which is great for 3D terrain building. We have the bolt factory, uh, extra objects, and I think that's it. And yeah, other other custom stuff I've added. So I'll just get rid of this for a sec and get rid of all this. So if I want to actually shift A to add, I want to add some additional stuff. You'll notice down the bottom here instantly. Oh, there's all this extra stuff. So I can add single vertices, a round cube, a twisted torus. Um, so if I go twisted torus, you can see instantly from the faces that it's actually looping through itself. Um, yeah, so the, all these become additional things. So you've got various maths functions and bits of gearing. So if we want to add a worm gear, you can see here there's a worm gear and we can actually go into the details and customize it as we see fit. And this becomes useful for adding in fairly common things like piping. If you want to do a Piper Mania game, then you can add in all these little pipe sections and control exactly how detailed it is, how many subdivisions on the surface, smooth or rough, etc, etc. And all of this is, is you know, kind of useful. The final set of stuff, and you know, up to you to play with, um, the final set of stuff is these diamonds, which adds complex geometry objects, so a brilliant diamond. So you can see here, facets of faces are cut and all that sort of stuff, and you can got, again, controls. Um, but also we have under the mesh section, we have these extras. So we've got various complex things. We can add a teapot, which is the classic um, teapot for um, 3DS Max, I think created by Stanford University. Oops, wrong key. Um, yeah, or honeycomb or other things to build more complicated geometries. 
and these are, are great for experimentation and stuff. The last thing I've, and I forgot to mention it earlier is when appending, adding, or importing files, actually appending or linking. Um, normally, what it starts with is you'll start with this sort of common view where you can see, oh, the file. Okay, I'll click on the file name, double click to activate it, and then you get all these files inside. This is all the sub parts of that Blender file. A lot of information is packed in there. So if I wanted to, I could look at the various materials that I've used in that scene. I can look at the scene itself. I can worry about the mesh meshes that I've created. You can see it's a fairly short list. Um, I can worry about the objects, really complex geometry of the stuff I've built. So you and even even a collection. So if I want to just bring in the model for that vehicle, there's the vehicle complete. It's all brought in. And I don't know if I've linked it or appended it. Yes, I can move it so it's actually appended. Um, and here, you know, I mean, this is the project I've been working on. So looking into a blend file, there's a lot of extra detail in there. And the final point I need to actually just point out is you can actually pack in images and video into a blend file. This does increase the size of the file, obviously. Um, oh, I should actually render a result before doing so. F12, just to get a shot of what's going on. So if I wanted to, I can actually pack in this image. I'm going to do image. Oh, it's not packed. So you can't pack in your render results. But if you've got a background image, such as the other scene that I've been working on, so I'll just flip over to that quickly. Uh, don't save. Here is the other scene I've been working on, as I've just said. Um, but if I look at the image, I have this image. It's not technically packed in, I don't think. But I can pack it into what my blend file is. It does increase the size. So obviously, images and video files increase the size of what's going on. Uh, but it does give you the option of keeping all your work together, which is really important because if you don't, you know, if you've got a huge directory structure with files linking all randomly over the place, it can cause a bit of a headache. So, and that's just the final point I want to make on this. So, yeah, just best to keep things simple and organised, but it's all good. All right, thanks. Bye.